<laughs> fast. <laughs> well, we want to be on time. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, we are here today because it is the end of an era. The end of the uh, fiscal year was midnight uh, uh, this morning. Uh, and what it signifies is the end of the two-year biennial budget. And the budget that we have been working under the last two years, of course, is the budget that was passed by the Republican majorities in 2011. And so what we've seen in the past two years uh, is really uh, life in Minnesota under a Republican budget. And what we are entering into starting today is the era of DFL single party budgets. And we will see, we won't know today or tomorrow or next week, but we will see sometime in the relatively near future what the effect of these changes that we saw enacted this past session, what they will bring to the people of Minnesota. We, of course, uh, are not very uh, optimistic about what those results will be, but we are, uh, frankly, uh, proud of the results that we have seen under the budget that we did enact two years ago. And we'd like to talk about that. And if, if you look at whatever economic indicator you choose, every in economic indicator, jobs created uh, to the amount that was paid down to the uh, deficit shows that the kind of responsible common sense budgeting that we enacted, that we worked on, when we were in the majorities two years ago, that that strategy, that that policy uh, has worked. Hardworking taxpayers were able to keep more of their money. Uh, they were taxed less. And it shows that an effective, efficient government is superior to one that is more expensive. Everybody benefits when we keep taxes low, keep opportunities high. And everyone is hurt when you raise taxes and you spend more money on wasteful, ineffective, inefficient spending, which is what we saw in this last budget. So just for an example, two years ago when we made the agreement on our budget, we had $1.7 billion in the school aid shift. That school aid shift today is $850 million. So almost a billion dollars in school aid shift was paid down. Not because we dedicated more money to do it, but because under the law, it says that when there are surplus revenues generated under the budget that you have, those surplus monies if they are first paid back to the state reserves and cash flow, get paid to the uh, school aid shift. So that was the third thing, and almost a billion dollars got paid down to the school aid shift. The cash flow, which was uh, at 95 million in 2011, uh, has been increased to 350 million. The deficit, I'm sorry, the budget reserve, which was zero, we had no, de no reserves, is now up to 656 million, fully restored. So almost a billion dollars in reserve and almost a billion dollars toward paying down the school aid shift. And those were the results of uh, surplus monies, if you will, beyond what was called for in the Republican budget that we enacted two years ago. The deficit, when, of course, when we came in uh, as majorities two years ago, was at $5 billion. Uh, it has been lowered to we had uh, about over $3 billion in surplus monies in 2013. So there's an $8 billion shift from the time we came into office till today when we leave, when, if you will, the budget uh, is turned over to the Democrats. We think that record is a good record, one that we are proud of, one that we think has been beneficial to the people of the state of Minnesota, and one that we, frankly, had advocated for and wished that the, uh, our opponents on the other side, the DFL, had paid more attention to when they enacted their budget. We, of course, were not uh, allowed to be a part of much of their deliberations on what their choices that they made, but they made their choices, and now we have the laws, and we'll see the effect of it. And I'd like to turn it over to Representative Doubt, and he can talk a little bit more about the other side of the equation. Thank you, and hopefully everybody's enjoying their summer. Um, this, uh, you know, today obviously uh, marks a day where we can draw a line in the sand uh, to show um, not only uh, the end of the Republican budget that has been so successful for Minnesota's economy and for families in Minnesota, um, but now we turn the page to uh, a different direction that the Democrats have chosen to take uh, Minnesota in a different direction. Uh, and obviously today, uh, July 1st, marks the day that numerous uh, new taxes go into place uh, that will affect uh, and basically mean that every Minnesotan will pay more. And I know that the Democrats were uh, were very honest in their campaigning that they wanted the uh, wealthiest Minnesotans to pay more and uh, to pay their fair share. Uh, but the end result and what we will see uh, is that all Minnesotans will pay more under the Democrats' budget. So some small examples of what's going into place uh, today. Um, 
obviously we have a new fourth tier uh, income tax rate. Um, and, and as I said earlier, uh, the Democrats were honest about saying they wanted to increase taxes on the top 2%, um, when in reality, 31% of Minnesotans will pay more state income tax uh, because of the, the uh, budget that the Democrats have put into place. Um, obviously one that's gotten a lot of attention, uh, the cigarette tax, uh, $1.60 per pack. Uh, this is one that really affects the lowest income Minnesotans probably uh, more and, and disproportionately uh, has a negative impact on those lower income uh, people. So um, the sales and gift tax, uh, $137 million. Um, if you're purchasing uh, or if your kids are purchasing downloads on the internet or uh, books on Amazon.com, all of those things now will be sales, uh, will be uh, taxed um, for the first time in the state's history. So um, in addition to that, we'll have uh, taxes on equipment repairs, uh, IT services, uh, your cable or satellite bill will now be taxed, um, and we'll have increases on, on fees and taxes for rental cars. Um, in addition to that, Minnesotans will pay more for their electric bills. Uh, due to new mandates that the Democrats have put in place on the requirements for where energy comes from. Uh, so we can expect that all Minnesotans will pay a higher uh, electric bill uh, starting today. Um, and in addition to that, we obviously have uh, uh, driver's license fees, vehicle registration fees, and vehicle title fees uh, that will mean it costs more to drive your car. Um, under the new Democrats' plan. So uh, unfortunately, uh, at a time when Minnesota's economy is recovering and Republicans have put Minnesota's economy on the right track, uh, Democrats have really decided to take Minnesota in the opposite direction, um, instituting $2.1 billion, uh, one of the largest tax increases in Minnesota history, um, and about $300 million in new fees on top of that, uh, and, and really no efficiencies uh, to speak of. So. Uh, Democrats really are, are gambling that, that uh, um, what we needed was more revenue, uh, and unfortunately uh, what we've seen over the last two years is a plan that really works. Um, and, and we actually brought more revenue in over the last two years uh, under, the, under the Republican plan without increasing taxes than the Democrats will uh, under their budget. So I think with that we can open it up for some questions. If your plan was so good, why did you get voted out of the majority? <laughs> well, you might have to ask more than just us. There's lots of things that go into an election, of course. Uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, there were other issues involved, but uh, 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 we think that the record that we have established and the uh, evidences of uh, the success that our budget brought to, to Minnesota, the stability. There was a lot of talk about uh, we need to have a uh, structurally balanced budget. There's no question uh, that going into the next biennium under the so-called Republican budget, uh, there was surpluses. So the, the, the arguments that were being used to justify the massive tax increases uh, simply weren't there. I think the massive tax increases that the Democrats proposed and passed were simply to justify the massive spending increases that they adopted. So we think that obviously there's more to an election than just uh, the economics, but uh, we think that uh, what we uh, uh, passed, what the budget that we enacted for the people of Minnesota was effective, has worked, and uh, we, we stand behind it. I think I want, to, I want to add on to that too, if I can, just before you continue. I think you know one of the things that I like to remember too is hindsight is twenty twenty, and and uh, uh, you know in the in the election, remember that the uh, budget forecast happened about a month later. And at the time, I said, "Boy, I wish this budget forecast had come out a month before the election instead of a month after." But the difference is, Democrats had the benefit of hindsight. They had all that information, and they saw that the Republican plan over the last two years was working. So they, frankly, don't have an excuse for all of these tax increases. Uh, we showed them a plan uh, that did work and is working for Minnesota, and unfortunately, they took uh, our budget in the opposite direction with huge tax increases uh, that we haven't seen the likes of in probably any of our lifetimes. The uh, credit rating agencies expressed a lot of concern about the tobacco bonds and the um, <clears throat> increase in the school shift, and, and they weighed in accordingly with the, the lowering of the state's credit rating, which is going to have significant impacts leading, uh, going forward. So how can you sort of, you know, make the argument that this is sort of working and, you know, making the state going forward when we've had this effect on our credit rating? Well, I think uh, that's one element, of course, uh, and all I would say is those were not obviously elements of our budget. Those were things that the, frankly, the uh, 
additional revenue that was uh, finally adopted were a part of the compromise we reached with the governor. Our plan didn't call for that additional revenue, but that's what was called for. But the, the, the proof is just uh, look at the revenue that the last budget has generated over and above what our budget called for. I would say that the bond uh, houses and their uh, evaluating our budget probably were pessimistic. Uh, I think that uh, we in our budget outperformed expectations. Uh, the economy has uh, 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 not faltered. It has grown. Uh, that the, as uh, Representative Dowd has pointed out, that we've seen additional revenues without increasing rates, that their uh, unemployment uh, has dropped, uh, we've created uh, more jobs into the economy. So I think that the things that we did in the budget uh, have been positive. They have been beneficial to the state. Uh, and I think to, to say that, uh, as, as Kurt pointed out, when you see that in the past, and then you adopt a budget that is going 180 degrees the other direction because your ideology says we have to do that, I think you have to just wonder why. You've got something that's working, that has worked, and you say no to that, and we're going to choose another path and just put more burdens on the economy, more burdens on every taxpayer in the state. The tax instance study shows that these tax rates are going to hit every person in the state of Minnesota. Everybody will pay more. And you do that, and you say why. Why are you doing that? And you look at the spending, and you look at what we spent money on, and you look at where is the reform, where are things going to get better? You can't point to that. So I think that rather than being driven by ideology, we took a very practical approach to trying to find ways to solve problems, improve how the budget works, and try to, uh, I guess, show some restraint and try to live within the means of what the economy was able to generate and hope that we could create the conditions that would allow continual uh, economic growth, and, and we've established that. That's what happened. So I think the uh, the past is a good indicator of uh, perhaps uh, the direction we should take for the future. If you guys are such great problem solvers, how come you didn't put, put, put budget forward on your own? You said you were going to put forward targets. I'm still waiting to see the targets. I well, I don't it. think we ever said we'd put forward targets. We Actually, said we'd, yes, you did. I no, I don't think we said targets. What we said is we'd put forward a, uh, a, a ideas about the direction that we would take, and we did do that. And basically what we had argued for all session long is that the approach that we would take is very similar to what the approach that we had uh, two years ago, that we wanted to uh, show some restraint on the tax side and try to manage spending within the uh, level of revenues that, that uh, uh, we had. And that was our approach. That was our approach two years ago, and that was the approach we argued for this year. I think, you know, I'll add on to that, too, that, you know, at the time we spoke about uh, saying that we were uh, ready, willing, and, and able to come to the table to roll up our sleeves to help solve this uh, problem for uh, for Minnesota and, and to help come up with a budget that frankly could uh, receive broad bipartisan support. And, and uh, the Democrats chose not to include Republicans in the process. And I think uh, for the first time in 22 years, we saw uh, what it looks like when one party controls all of state government. And frankly, uh, all of the, the lip service that the Democrats uh, gave to the citizens of Minnesota over the last two years saying that they wanted a balanced approach uh, and they, they wanted compromise and they wanted uh, Republicans and Democrats to work together. Um, I think the, big, the bigger question is for Democrats in why didn't you do what you said? Um, and, and that's the bottom line. Uh, frankly, uh, you know, Democrats, we, and we offered to come to the table and help them uh, work through this budget, uh, and they solved the budget on their own, and now they're going to have to live with the consequences. But uh, frankly, our question is, um, uh, why did we shift course when we were on a path that was working? Um, and, and as I said earlier, uh, uh, the Democrats had the benefit of hindsight. They could see uh, from those budget forecasts that the policies that Republicans put in place over the last two years uh, were working and have worked. They've grown Minnesota's economy. Uh, more jobs have been created and, and more Minnesotans are working and the state has received uh, more revenue. In fact, over $3 billion of surplus revenue uh, in the last biennium. Now I have to say the last biennium. I guess I gotta remember that today is the, <laughs> the new budget. But um, but there's a lot of truth in that, and, and uh, uh, the Democrats are the ones that really need to answer those questions. Why did they go it on their own, and why did they uh, uh, stray from what they said they were going to do? Every state government benefited from the improvements in the national economy. How much of the improvements you're setting here to the national economy, and how much are due to your policies? You know, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if anybody does, but uh, you also look around the country, and there are very few states doing what we're doing, raising spending and raising taxes at the same time. There just aren't states doing that. In fact, what you, if you look around, especially to states that are competitive with Minnesota, what you're finding are states trying to find ways to uh, reduce their tax burden on their uh, economic uh, uh, job producers. We're, we're sort of an outlier compared to the, the states that we compete with and just looking at the economic realities we face. So I don't know how much of that is, is uh, related to what goes on around the world or around the country. But what I do know is we are not uh, being competitive. When you look at any one of the indicators you want to look at, uh, we've got uh, with this new tax rate, 
uh, one of the highest tax rates in the country. Uh, those things just aren't, aren't good. And they're not good news for job creators. They're not good news for anybody in the state. And I think the, the bottom line here is that, uh, you know, Democrats uh, are putting in dozens of new taxes today, and the, the end result of that is uh, every Minnesotan is going to pay more for the, the goods and services that they pay for every day, and that means less opportunities uh, for them to, to improve their own situation, their own family, um, and that's the sad part. So, uh, you know, dozens of new taxes for uh, billions of more dollars, and every Minnesotan is going to uh, get stuck uh, footing the bill. Down the road, if a Republican wins the governor's office, if Republicans retake the House, Democrats will be in charge of the Senate, I would assume. Unless well, they will next year because <laughs> we don't have an election. Uh, unless, unless a lot of people resign. You never know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I mean, things possible in St. Paul, right? <laughs> looking at this and looking at the current budget, how would state government reach some type of compromise? Or would it result in like a couple years ago and no compromise and have to go to the shutdown again. If you're, you haven't changed, you're still very different, Democrats and Republicans. Is well, a compromise possible? Well, there's always compromise. In fact, we reached compromise uh, when we were in the majorities in the House. Uh, there's always compromise. We have a constitutional requirement that we uh, have a balanced budget. That requires that there be compromise at some point if you have a divided government. You, you just have to. Unlike the federal government, where they don't have that burden of ever reaching an agreement, we have to reach an agreement. So it does mean that there has to be compromise. Sometimes that compromise is a little painful to get to, but there always, always has been. I don't think there's ever been a year in this state where we haven't had a budget. So there always will be compromise. Sometimes it may be hard to get there. So I, I don't think that that's an issue. But I do think that uh, clearly uh, Minnesota has got uh, uh, divided uh, perceptions about what direction we need to take. Uh, I think the DFL party uh, uh, has uh, an ideology that says uh, what we need is to tax fewer and fewer people and make them pay more and more of what supposedly all of us are going to benefit by. I keep asking them, well, if that's a good idea, why don't we just find the 10 richest people and take all their money, and then none of us have to pay anything. I mean, that's the natural outcome of this progressive taxation structure. But the point is, they have a different view of how things should work. What we believe is we need to foster growth in the economy. We need to make taxes fair, transparent. We need to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to uh, pursue their dreams and uh, uh, do so in a way that is productive. And we're committed to that, and we think that the policies that we've adopted have uh, shown a path to accomplish that. And to be clear, you totally support the budget passed in the 11th. Well, when you say totally, what do you mean? That I believe in every single item that was passed? And, you know, obviously there are things we agreed to that we didn't advocate for and that we didn't uh, pass in our legislative uh, committees. So uh, I can't say, well, yeah, I agree with that particular thing. But when you pass a budget and you agree to an agreement, well, then you're part of the party to the budget. But I don't think there's any budget that any legislator will say that they agree with 100 percent of everything. That's the nature of legislative uh, acts is that there's so much in it that you can always find something that you can disagree with and always things, even budgets you don't like, things that you do agree with. And there are things in this budget that I think we would say that we think we're good. So you have an out. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that that's the honest truth, that uh, budgets are big, big things, and there's things in it that are good and bad no matter which ones are passed. So. I, th I think, too, that's a good question for the Democrats. I mean, today is the day. Today is the first day of their new budget. And, uh, you know, I, didn't, I guess I didn't see the media advisory that the Democrats were going to be following us today. I hope that at some point, uh, you know, that they'll be talking to you. And I hope they're not hiding out uh, because, uh, you know, the case that we make is these, these tax increases are going to harm Minnesota's economy. They're going to harm opportunities for Minnesotans to uh, improve their own lives and their own families. And Democrats should be here at the microphone telling you why this is a great idea. Uh, but I think it's telling that they're not. Um, so I think, I, I think the more important question is where are the Democrats today and where are they hiding? Uh, because these are things that if they thought they were such a good idea, um, they should be here touting why they're a good idea, not hiding from them. And just on that point, one of the questions that, that I know I had asked, and I think others had asked too all through the session uh, of the Democrats on their proposals is, tell us why raising this tax, these tax rates are going to help the economy grow. How does that work? Explain how raising these tax rates, whatever they might be, how they help grow the economy, how they help ordinary, hardworking citizens of this state have a better life, how to raising tax rates across the board on everything, how does that help? And no one, no Democrat ever answered that question. And I think that's a good question to ask them. They should come up and explain how these increased burdens are going to help the people of this state, because that's what they've, that's what they've done. 
And they have, to, I think, an obligation to explain how that's going to help. Okay. Either of you two plan to make any announcements on gubernatorial runs? <laughs> Anyone? I have already announced, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be uh, making some uh, <laughs> some public uh, 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 announcement of my intentions uh, before the end of the week. All right. Thank you all. Week, before the end of this week? Yes. Didn't you say it wasn't going to be this week? Now you're saying it was this week? Well, what I said is not this week.